So we'll go ahead and get started talking about uh, this React uh, React Hooks uh, roguelike game as produced by the tutorial. So I'm showing off the uh, app here. Um, this here, we have the map area. I'm not sure if my cursor is going to show in the recording. But uh, so the items are represented by symbols. And they, we run into them. They'll go into our inventory. So you can probably tell we're moving the at sign with the arrow keys. And uh, so uh, let's see a couple things that I did um, where I changed uh for things that were in the tutorial i added a little bit of styling to the inventory and the combat log here to try to match the look of the game world a bit um so it's pretty simple right now you have <clears throat> the, the little carrot symbol um that's kind of in the bottom right uh, or I guess it's actually the right angle bracket symbol is the stairs. And then, uh, so we saw the health potion, I think. I'm not going to go too much further into this. Um, okay, so the K, that's a kobold, I think. Yeah, so they're monsters. This is all pretty simple. Uh, this is, again, this is as produced by the tutorial. Every time you attack, you do one damage, so there are no stats, per se, other than health. Uh, you don't have a damage stat. <clears throat> Monsters don't have a defense stat. You can't level or, or any of this, it's, so it's, it's pretty basic, but you, we do generate, uh, as you can probably tell now as we've gone through three levels, you, we generate a randomized map, we display it. Um, so if you want to learn how to do that, um, then probably want to follow through the tutorial. Although it is it, this the map as it stands here, the random map is largely generated by a library, I think, and I don't know much about that myself. Um, uh, so yeah, when we get down to zero health, we die. Uh, the, this D over here is, is a dragon, and it's like, if you're at full health, you could just barely beat one. Uh, things you can't do, can't equip inventory, um, can't level, and obviously, as I said before. Uh, so it's actually, it's actually kind of cool, because the tutorial does, like guide you through a lot and I would honestly say a lot of the hard parts of creating this um, and then still leaves you with a lot to do which uh, is kind of something I like about a tutorial um, if it like mm, shows you how to get started with something and then like there leaves a lot of um, things that you can still do with it so you could Kind of get started with something and uh so let's see here all right just just checking back on the event um here we have uh well let me go into the project here i don't know how much of this will make sense but let me go into here it depends on like where you're at and what you know um so the base this being a, a react app app is our is our base component let's see that's going to be rendered in i don't really need to go through this but in index uh, js renders app and an app basically just renders react rogue in here we're using um a whole bunch of 
the React hooks use effect. I don't know that much about these. I've never used React hooks before, so I can't really add that much to them. I have to say it's something that I'm interested in. If I, I might try to learn more about it, I would prefer to uh, look at ways to make it more like mm, comprehensible because when I look at it I'm just like I don't know what these two um, or like what's the difference between this one and that one um, so it's I guess it's uh, I just haven't used it that much so I don't know how to interpret that offhand um, I just went to a random part here so I'm let's see not really finding a whole lot. Let's look at a few things that are sort of um, important in here. So, uh, or interesting things to absorb. So this input manager is using this uh, observer pattern uh, that uh, the tutorial author decided to use. So I have linked this article on the observer pattern Basically, um, this pattern utilizes ob observers that subscribe to a, um, a basically an event broadcaster that can just stream events to the observers. And so in here, um, this is basically we create an array of observers and whenever... Uh, an event happens. So here we have um, uh, this kind of is going to look a little backwards. So we add an event listener for the key down events. So anytime a keyboard key is pressed, then handle keys is activated. And then we're switching on the key code. So this is just going to only process four different key codes. And these are the arrow keys. And then if if one of those turns out to have been pressed, then we'll broadcast this verb. And so the uh, what this does is uh, go through each subscriber and uh, send it this verb with the data. And then where let's look at an example of how that comes out. So here's um, through it through a sort of chain. This is a, a, an observer that's getting that verb, and the let's say the verb is is bump here. That's like um, let's see. That's not it's not quite right. Let's see. Um. All right, that's coming from, uh, geez, this is just like a, okay, right. So the place where this uh, observer is being hooked up is over here in React Rogue. And um, it's in one of these use effects. So it's right here. So um, it's going, it's, Calling the bind keys method that way the it's just, that's just activating the event listener, um, and then it's uh, subscribing this handle and input. It's adding this handle input method here as a observer in the input manager, and so that that way anytime that um, uh, handler is broadcast it's going to send that action in this data so basically what this does is uh, the only action that is being taken from input is moving the player so that's where we were looking at before that's how we get to uh, this over here from the um, 
the input manager and that uh, observer pattern. So in here, we're getting that data parameter from the, uh, what was it? I'm having trouble, uh, right from the handle keys mm, method. And we, uh, so this here, this is just how the tutorial author chose to, to deal with this. It copies the player, moves it over, and then checks uh, what we have. We have a two-dimensional array that represents the world. This is checking whether there's uh, an entity at that location. Um, so that's, uh, let's see. Yeah, OK. So that's the observer pattern part. Now we can start looking at um, classes. And I think, yeah, world is a class. So that's, uh, let's see, what can I say about the world class? Um, so not, there's only one world generally at any time. Uh, so that's not, that's only gonna have one instance. Um, yeah, you know what, I don't, I'm not gonna go over classes. I think I wanted to go over that observer pattern. I'm, uh, it's very difficult to add, um, substance to these things, but I'm not really prepared. So I will talk about a couple of things that I did as far as the, the difference here between the appearance of uh, this app here and the app as it was produced by the tutorial. So I've got some extra CSS here in the CSS file and Basically, um, so this this nth child selector here is what's producing the um, the like off color every other line deal, which I felt like might help uh, make the inventory parse a little better. I'm not sure if it really does or not. Um, Actually, you know what, as I'm looking at it now, I think I probably would have maybe added a gradient instead that would have produced the same effect. Um, but so it goes. Uh, the other thing I did was I added something I typically add to almost every pro, uh, project is the reset CSS file, which I imported up at the top here. And always import that before your own CSS file. You only have to import that once, but it helps um, override user agent styling, which is just styling from the browser. Uh, a couple other things I did was dip, that was different. Um, they There were multiple instances of just hard-coded values. Um, so spawn loot, this, these are level constants. Spawn loot would have been in... I think loot JS. Um, oh no, okay, so it would have been in uh, spawner JS, I think. Um, no, maybe not. I think, oh, okay. See, this is, uh, I haven't uh, looked at a lot of this in a while, so. Wow. Oh, okay, right. I think maybe the, yeah, the stairs is what. This is so. Right. Okay. Yeah, like I said, I haven't looked at like most of this code in like a week. So that's, I'm uh, having to refamiliarize myself with it a little here. And it's very, um, it's very modular, which is like kind of a good thing, but uh, 
usually if I write it myself, I'm a little more familiar with what everything does and where everything is at. But since I was just like following a tutorial, I'm not as like on top of it. Uh, so let's look at these expansion ideas. Um, let's see if we wanted to implement gold as a stat for the player. Let's go ahead and look at what it looks like now and how that might be affected. So one thing is every, the dollar signs are the coins, and when you run into them, um, you just pick up a gold coin, which acts like any other thing in your inventory. So um, at, at the point where that's processed, uh, there needs to be, first of all, so we can, we can identify obviously at the point where loot is picked up, it needs to be, uh, okay. So, okay. So this looks like probably the place where we can deal with that um let me look at so first of all uh, we can easily just add a starting attribute um let's see thinking about this um uh because these, some of these values are going to change. I want to have starting values. Let's see. Uh, player starting values. Let's see something here. Right. Once player starting values. And this will just be an object. Don't want to export it. Okay, then I shall decide what the fields are going to be. Uh, first of all, take health. Um, unfortunately, my scroller doesn't work well, so gets a little my project files is just too large so we'll say gold zero all right um and then i feel like we should have a constructor in here um well no that won't work Let's see hmm no, that, that won't work right. Uh, let's see. I'll just put gold equal to zero here for now. Uh, the way that this is all done is a little weird, so I'm not sure the persistence is going to work. So the reason I say that is... Uh, oh, okay, so I see that's what they're doing. Um, so each time that an action is taken, uh, we create a new uh, world uh, class object and then use object assign to assign all this, to copy all the properties. So I think that might work, but I'm not really sure if, well, I guess it, assuming it copies the player by reference because the player is just a property. So I'm not really sure, as I'm not that familiar with object design, whether it uh, creates a deep copy of an object. So this that's kind of a gotcha sometimes when it comes to uh, objects and arrays is when you copy them. First of all, when you just copy them normally, uh, you copy them by reference and then when you want to copy them by value if they have multiple dimensions 
then it can start getting tricky. Anyway, um, let me stop digressing. Let's see here. Um, let me look at loot table. Um, okay, so, uh, I want to look at, I think, uh, um, So loot action player adds the loot. So okay, um, the loot should be um, got it. Okay, so the item we'll say if item attributes name is equal to let me take a look at this uh, so all these values um, in the loot table are stored in the attribute uh, property on the object so if the name is gold coin uh, let's see Go back to player. If the name is gold coin. Then we want to do one thing, and then otherwise we want to push that item to the inventory. So let me go back to this and look, because I think that it's already part of the process before it uh, let's see entity it should be a loot again see this is kind of complete confusing yeah okay got it so it already does remove it from the world when uh, so the bump verb is sent when the player bumps into this object and um, so the entity I'll I'll show this as far as how this works. Uh, so when the player, uh, the copy of the player moves into a space and this helper method determines that there's an entity at that location. So if entity, which is a return value of that, then um, the entity action is triggered with the verb of bump. And it also sends the a copy of the world, which gives access to the player. Um, and all the entities, but uh, so uh, the if you look at entity, it doesn't really do anything. It has action, and all it does is console log the verb. But as it happens, uh, loot extends entity. So this is using the inheritance uh, property of classes. And here in loot, the bump verb uh, first triggers. The player to add, then it removes it from the world. So with that, since we know that, then we don't have to worry about removing it from the world here. Um, we all. So what we'll do is, for now, uh, let's see. This attributes gold uh, plus equals. One. So we'll just start with that um, pretty simply. And um, so if we're going to do that, then we want some sort of display of that. So let's see, game wrapper. And we have this detail wrapper. You look at what type of container the game wrapper is okay flex and we've got this a kind of okay let's just say um 
that is the and detail wrappers twenty with that's that big. Um then let's let me see if flex wrap will take care of adding this other thing here. Um so what I wanna do is uh, create a div class name equals um, stats wrapper because I want to display some player stats. Um, what we could do is just console log the gold every time this happens. Uh, we could start out with that just to test that's working. Um, and I'll just write stats there for basic purposes. Let me go back to player. And we'll console log uh, attributes that gold. That'll confirm that picking up a gold coin does add to the gold. And in order to test this, I need to uh, put npm run start. That'll start up the uh, the local server all right let me check back on the event here all right so yay one thing i'd like about uh the create react app is that it does automatically open uh your local host once it starts running not every um well, let me check my console that's definitely not what i want that's not where i want stats to display so uh okay so it worked um there's just a ton of console logs but there's the um the one from the gold that we picked up so let me see here um can move over here and pick up another one to confirm that it uh, increased to two. All right. Um, good. Let's see. I think what I'm going to need. I'm going to need to rethink. Well, I guess that would work. Okay. So. Sure, we could put the stats over there. Um, I kind of want to put them underneath the. Oh, well, that's taking up a lot of space. So, yeah, sure. You know what? We'll put them there. Um, so let's go to the stats wrapper. I don't know if this is gonna work on every screen, but then again, it's not exactly. I mean, it's not gonna be mobile friendly or whatever no matter what we do so let's go ahead and start looking at um styling this kind of just make it quick and simple um so let's see uh stats wrapper uh, let's call it 10 rim background I'm going to copy this one here. And then padding left. Well, let's just say padding one rim. And uh, I'm going to copy the color as well. Then let's see here. Let's go ahead and the key that says player, and then um, ah, I'm struggling to type. So another P uh, says. Gold and 
then we'll just inject uh, world player attributes goal. Let me see. I think we have access to world here. I don't recall exactly where we get it. Oh, I think it's a hook, isn't it? Yeah, okay. So this is use state, and that uses uh, React hooks. So that's handy. It's an easy way to get a piece of state into, um, yeah, a component. So let's go ahead and take a look and see if that's working now. Yep, okay. One funky thing, though, is that when you um, refresh the page, it generates more stuff, uh, despite, or when you uh, save changes, then it generates more stuff, which is kind of weird. So now we can move around and pick up some thing and see that it does do a thing. Um... I'm feeling like this is a little messy, but let's see here. Um, I think my main issue is... Uh, I'm modifying the wrong thing here. Let's go ahead and put padding pop one ram on that i was not liking the way that the stuff did not line up uh, i'm not sure what sector labels okay combat log i think that's actually what i want Okay, so that's the one that I want to have the padding on. It might help things line up, and then let's see here. Um, stats wrapper. I want to make the font size a little bit bigger there. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, okay, at least that lines up. And then, let's see. Okay, I'm gonna do a stats wrapper a P. So the child, <clears throat> the paragraph child elements, I want them to have a margin bottom of half a rem. Let's see that should create some spacing between these lines. Good. All right, so that's simple. Um, now the player can collect gold, and instead of it being placed in their inventory, it is now going into a stat on the player. So that's fairly simple. I feel like that took a lot of time, but that's. Kind of the way it goes, I guess, planning is a fair portion of the time that things take. So uh, let's go ahead and... Well, I think I also took a lot of time to awkwardly explain but not explain things. And so be it. So gold as a stat of the player. We'll go ahead and mark that as... And to put an X there. No, oh, auto correcting text. Uh, so, oh, the player levelable. Um, I feel, I feel like I got ahead of myself. So this is <laughs> it happens. So let's let's break this down into some sub goals. So let's say stats on player. Um, Stats on monsters. Uh, monsters have XP. Player 
has lots. Okay, let's reverse these. So, um, the player has XP monsters. Let's say give XP, and um, so when the player, then the player can level because until the player has stats and the monsters have stats, then there's not really much sense to leveling the player. And I think um, before I do that, I'm going to say stats on players. So stats on players, stats on monsters. I'm just reorganizing some things. Some things won't make a lot of sense. Um, so let's take this and let's see. M's equipable. Um, and potions can be used. So this this will uh, there will be some question there as to whether um, do we use a potion when we run into it or can we use a potion at any time that we want. Um, okay, so many sub goals involved in this leveling the player. Um, so let's just start with stats on the player. Keep it kind of simple. Um, oh, I also wanted to see. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Where do we create the player initially? Oh, up in. Okay, so I got to look at. First of all, I got to look at the player and. Okay, so that's not. Let's see here. Uh, let me look at the world. All oh, right. Um, player does have. I think the player extends entity. Okay, so that's. I was wondering why there was no constructor. And attributes, attributes, and where let's see. So there being okay, so attributes is optional. Um, I don't know, I have to think about that one. Um, I was thinking about that because I have this um, player starting values thing here, and I was asking myself if, um, well, there's currently no game over or restart game function, so if you die, you have to refresh the page, so I guess there isn't much point in worrying too much about it. So let's go ahead and... Uh, let's say let's, I'm just going to create some arbitrary, arbitrary values here. Let's say his attack is three, defense is two, um, and yeah, we'll just start with that. So um, I guess that pretty much constitutes giving the uh player stats so let's see here um if we say so an ogre let's say an ogre does ogre has let me look back at the player player i'm going to copy these values in here so i feel like this the player starting values i feel like that's going to be for like later use but still i want to do it now so, uh, again, attack three, defense two. So we have to kind of decide. Wait. Okay, damage. So it's attack and defense. It's so easy to get yourself mixed up. I want to keep those values consistent. So 
I feel like an ogre is going to be a little stronger. I'm going to give it a attack of four for now. Defense of, let's say, four. Uh, let's see. Here. Attack. Let's give the kobold an attack of two. And so this is the um, defense of two. Sure. Slime will give an attack of two and a defense of one. And a dragon. Let's see. Attack. Give it a eight. Defense of seven. Okay. So now all of the. I'm just going to check that these are all the same. Okay, good. Uh, right. So that gives them all attack and defense. Now we should look at monster. Is it monster? Okay, yeah. So. Now we can, like, create some, let's see, what if we, let's see, I'm going to create, a file called damage calculator in utilities. I wanted to look at what this okay input manager was a class. I don't think I'm gonna let's see. No, I'm not gonna make damage calculator a class. Let's see, I could make it just a function, honestly. Let's see. Export default. Function um, pack image. Okay, let's see. So that would allow us to determine the. So let's say. So this this is the the part that often makes me like oh, I don't know because I am not like a statistics guy. So like um, it's something I still need to like figure out like how what sort of algorithm do do we use to decide the ultimate value? So I mean we could make it pretty simple. Um, so let's just start with that let's see uh let's see let resulting result equal uh attack oh geez attack minus defense if result is less than Zero. Uh, let's see. Uh, math. Random. Uh, times two is less than. So we'll say if the result is less than zero, then half the time we'll return one, and the other half of the time we'll return zero. Uh, let's see. Great. And then we return the result. <clears throat> so 
So I don't know if that's exactly the way I want to do it. Let's just look at what are the player stats. So the players three and two. So well, you know what? I'm not even gonna go through that. Let's just start off with Force Monster. Let's import import damage calc calculator. Let's just see how it works because I don't even need to go through and figure it out. Honestly, we could just put it to use and see what it does. I think that will be kind of interesting. Uh, so let's see. This is a minus. Let's see. Instead of saying one, we'll say damage calculator, and the dam the attack will be world player attributes attack. And the defense will be this attributes defense. Great. And then over here, um, Okay, so here's the other one we want to do damage calculator on. And we probably will want to uh, do this attributes uh, attack and world player attributes defense. Okay. We probably will want to like modify that damage calculator because that's I don't even know if you could honestly call that a algorithm. Uh, it's pretty basic. That's one way of handling the problem. So if that works as I think, then you should get trashed by the ogre even worse. Yeah, we're not even making a dent in the ogre. What the cobalt? Well, that's interesting. Yep, that's that's definitely different than it was before. Um, one issue is you don't get to see the stats before you attack the thing, so we'll go attach, attack the dragon and it should just destroy us. And yes, we died. So interestingly enough, I don't hate that algorithm. <laughs> if it can be termed an algorithm, it certainly serves as a starting point for Oh yeah, so the dragon hit us for like six health, and we did not hit it. <laughs> so dragon's pretty foreboding at the moment. But you know what? I kind of like it because one thing that we immediately see is that the stats do matter, and so different monsters are now uh, either intimidating or a pushover. Yes, these slimes do seem to be pretty easy at this point. I don't know if there is a chance that the slime could hit you. Let's see, let me look at the slime's health in the monster table. It has, yeah, no, I think, hmm. I think it's possible the slime could hit you. Um. So one thing I was going to do, let's see here. So, you know what? No, I'm not even going to make that more complicated. I'll just leave it at that. So uh, another thing we could do, we could add more monsters uh, to this table. That's one of the reasons why I split this out. This was just in the one of the components. I don't remember. But I made this its own file so we could just create more monsters if we wanted to. 
but hey, I feel pretty decent about that. Um, not the most sophisticated uh, algorithm ever, but I feel like that's almost not really a problem. Uh, so inventory control is going to be a little more complicated. Uh, let's see. Just, uh, let me look at a couple things here. Because what we need is essentially we need a state variable that, uh, so here, let me just describe what I'd like to do. So I would like to make it so that when you press the, say, like, space bar, that um, you go into inventory man management mode, and then you'll get, like, a bar up here, and then your cursors will, like, move this bar. And then, say, you hit enter, then you would either... Uh, let's say you were you're you had a piece of equipment selected, then you would equip that. And let's say you had a, a potion selected, then you would use that. So that would be so the issue to, uh, offhand is that we need to. Um, we need to have a state variable that determines whether or not we are in the, okay, so one thing that comes to mind, uh, let's kind of start similarly to what we did with the handle input here. So let's go to the input manager. And, um, oh, so one thing we need to do, uh, let's see, let's look up HTML, HTML key code space. Uh, so looks like it's 32. So 32 is going to be the move here. Yeah, let's see, open. Um, let's see, so I don't know that we have any data, data. Hmm. No, no, we don't have any data, so what? We'll just see if that works. I don't know if it'll, I don't think it'll be a problem that we don't have a second um, thing there. So let's see, uh, let's go to the React Rogue file where we have our handle input that is subscribed there. And, um, Let's see here. If action equals open, and let's see here. Right, I think I'm lacking a little bit of um, let's see. Right, let's just start with this console log open. 
and then we'll return. So that should. I'm try. I'm still trying to figure out how to create the state with um, React hooks. I my knowledge uh, is really based on. All right, so I don't know if I have the key code wrong here. No, it's 32. Okay, hold on. So everything is not only smooth. Let's see. Mm, did I get the action right? Let's see here. Okay. Send a piece of data. Maybe I don't imagine that'll make much difference, but uh, let's see here. So well, I really don't know. I really don't know. Uh, this is an experimental process. This is, uh, it's kind of hard to do like live actual coding while you're commenting because, um, yeah, there's, there's a certain process of experimentation and failure when you're trying to do something that you haven't done. Okay, let's see. Oh, okay, so it did. Uh, we got open. Cool. Uh, so let's see. When we hit space, we're getting into this logic here. So now, let's see. Um, let's just make... Uh, Um, I'm thinking of like a, let's see, that would be pretty simple. Um, let's see. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Hmm. What would, let's just try something here. I'm thinking too hard right now. So what I'm going to do is just make a UI folder and let's see, make a file called menu.js and I will say const menu equals uh, and then uh, I'll see um uh, let's see open equals false well actually just say export default well no hold on let me How is, how are these done? Okay, so let's do it that way. Except that these are not going to be, uh, so. Actually, you know what? Let's just make it a class. Class menu. And here.
Okay. And then... Let me come up here. This is... I, I don't know how I feel about doing it that way, but I don't know what else to do right now. Uh, in a different context, I would probably think through this process a little different. Oh. I'm just realizing since I was a class, I should ca capitalize this. This is just a nomenclature nomenclature thing. So allow me to do that. Uh, capitalize that. Okay. Oh, cool. It automatically changed it. I like that. But when it does change it in um, Visual Studio Code, when you change a, like a file name, it automatically updates it in all the files that are importing it but you still have to go through all those files and save those changes so that's a that's a gotcha that has messed me up before so let's see const menu set menu you state uh, let's see new menu false And that should do that. So I don't know if this is the best way to do this, but it might work. So let's see. I need. I'm gonna need a set menu. I think. Okay, so. Oh, okay. Right. So. Let's see, let new menu equal new men new menu equal new menu. Well that creates an instance of the menu class, then assigns it to the new menu variable. Then we'll uh, this seems like overkill, but uh, Menu, menu, um, let me see here. You know what, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, what was it? Oh, right. I want to put a method on menu. So where is it at? It's in the UI file. So, okay. Let's come over here and let's say toggle menu. Uh, So that'll just set set it to the opposite value of what it was. Um, but I don't think that's the right. There we go. That's how you do it. Uh, I should be used to that because I work with React a lot, and React components are uh, their classes. They extend class. Um, well, they don't have to be. Sorry, but all the components that I've been working with have been class-based components. I don't have that much experience with using functional components, uh, so I don't know how to handle things that I do know how to handle um, with like that sort of deal. So um, let's see, and then all we got to do is Toggle oh, whoops. New menu toggle menu. I think that'll work. And then set menu new menu. Okay. And then 
let's see. Uh, great. So now we don't really have a way to uh, verify that it's working per se. Um, what we want to do from here um, okay so we want to use some we want to use state where's that here Right, so if the menu is open and somebody, uh, the user presses the arrow key, then I just want to log menu open. So that's a that's a start for doing something different instead of um, right. So we can't move if the space key has been hit an odd number of times. Okay, that was an odd bug. Um, yeah, that was an unexpected one. Uh, let's see here. That's gonna require some thinking. I Initially offhand, I'm inclined to think that that's a result of the way that movement is done. So that may need to be changed because that's just weird. I don't know why. Okay, no, never mind. It's moving the player left no matter what, which definitely should not be happening. Oh, I see. So if the action. It's processing uh, that's how unexpected. So it's processing the second, the action. But the strange thing is when on an open action, should be returning so we shouldn't be hmm. okay let's see we can't move we do okay so it's when we are That's uh oh goodness. I I don't know if my brain can handle this right now. This is one of those deep dive situations. Uh so let's see what are we doing here if the action is, is open then we create a new menu i almost wonder if this is like a synchron a sequencing error uh like the problem is let me see something here let me add a console log So, actually, let me look at this one. This should tell me what's going on there, because it should. 
Um, let's see. Let me reproduce this. Did I mess up the code? Uh, oh, I'm in the wrong, <laughs> wrong version of the app. Okay. Right. That is the one that's launched on Amazon Web Services. So let's come over here. And it's very difficult to keep track of Ugh, the console logs. Okay. So it's moving. Let's just try copying these lines in here because I don't know if there's an issue with the world not being set here. I, I don't understand. What I can see is that it did not get down to this line. So it's not to, it's not getting to that line. Thus, it's not calling move player, so it doesn't make 100% sense to me why it's moving there. we got to kill a kobold just to get past here. Hey, that he did not do any damage to us. That's good. What did I do that was different? Because that appears to fix the problem. Oh, yeah, so I did reassign the world. Oh, well, then I am a genius. Great. <laughs> that did. The... Uh, let me just take a moment. Great. I am enjoying killing low level monsters. And now we can go into our inventory. Okay. So, uh, let's see, to begin even, um, to even begin, uh, we need to have inventory. So now we have a health potion. Uh, let's see here. Great. And then... Ooh. Let's see. Uh, so one thing that I'm thinking is we have the menu. Then the other thing we need is uh, in menu. We need uh, this dot. Um, index so we I, we either need to get the information as to how long the 
players. So the player has inventory. I think we saw that earlier when we were not putting the gold in the inventory. So we need the length of this. Um, and I don't think we can or should try to get it in here. So this needs to be coordinated through here. Um, so let's say this is going to be in here. So this is the logic for um, if uh, so let's see. Okay, let's, first of all, let's say if menu index is greater than or equal to world player inventory length. So that's, let's say the player has one item then the length will be one, I think, then if the index is greater than that. And we'll do one thing, otherwise we'll do another. So let's see. Uh, else we'll do another. So one thing we need on here is we need, oh, on the menu, we need, uh, methods to change so let's see let's see uh, set index value uh, this dot index is equal to value I don't know if that's really the way that we should do that I'm probably breaking some rules there but I do not have the greatest amount of mental energy at the moment. So if the menu index is greater than world player inventory length, and um, let's see, and Let's see, let me go back to inventory. Or an input manager. What I think is so right. So I think a negative one in the Y is gonna represent an up because it's we're looking at drawing from the top down. So, uh, so if the index is greater than the length and the y is greater than zero, then that means the they press the down key and the index is already greater or then are equal to the inventory length then we want to call menu set index to zero and else um let's see uh menu index menu index C plus so if, I think it's going to be data y times negative one because if they pressed down we want to increase the index 
and down is correspondent to wait no actually that's they press down we want to increase the index down is positive no that's going to work perfectly we don't need this times negative one i'm overthinking it great okay so Oh, actually, see, I'm uh, in the process of doing this wrong. So let's go ahead and do that first. This will just create a whole travesty, as we well know. Do that at the end. And then, uh, let's see. Um, I don't think that matters, but here we need to do the, perform this on new menu. And you know what, let me just copy that. I think that'll keep us safe from getting mex messed up. Okay. Save that, and then, um... Let's see, the other thing I want to do, let's go down to this. Um, before we return this item of inventory, let's see, let item class equal nothing then if index if index is equal to menu index and menu open item class plus equals Active. And then we shall apply the class item class. All right, now let's just add an item class. And for now, let's see. Yeah, I want to put it after this. I wanted to change that. So inventory. Um, oops. Active. Right. So let's say background. Uh, RGB 20, 20, 20. And yeah, that'll do. So let's try that. I don't know if this will all work but we shall find out line four menu js it does not like Okay. That should make it happy, as it were. So, first of all, we're going to need inventory. So that much is working. It, we are getting the, you can see that it's, we do have a thing. So let's see something here. Now we can begin to process what what is happening when we go into here. Oh, I think the issue is I didn't call this line. 
had all the intentions of, of doing that when, yeah, at some point, and then I forgot. So let's see. Okay, hold on. So we have a problem here. Let's see. Um, first of all, to see if it, if it was the classic coding error here. No? So uh, let's see. I'm like, why can't I do anything? Because I attacked a dragon. And that obviously resulted in me dying. Uh, let's see, I can pick up a couple of items, then I can start processing why this is not working. Uh, let's see, I guess the best thing to do would be to... Uh, uh, if the index is greater than or equal to, index starts off at zero. Console, console log, world, player, inventory, length, and I also want a console log, data, y, and I want a console log, menu, index. I may start cutting out some of these old logs too because they're kind of cluttering things up and making it difficult for me to figure out what I am doing wrong at the moment. And since I'm going to do a lot of things wrong, that's a bit of a problem. I need, I need feedback on what I am doing wrong. Okay. So let's see. 32, 33, 34. So the inventory length is 2. Y was 1, which meant we hit down. Menu index was 0. Length we hit down. OK, so. Here's the problem. Um, I think that's, okay, let's see if that helps. Okay, I don't even, don't know what was going on there. I almost feel like, you know what, I think I will do as I'm like testing certain features because I really, it would have been helpful to, okay, so two, one, so it was one. Maybe, let's see, let me look at the display. I scroll down the combat log. Inventory map index, index is equal to menu index, and menu is open. F class plus equals active. And let's see here. Um, I wonder, I'm just 
processing this. I may change that. So let me see here. Let me go grab another item. So I wonder if the, because uh, I don't know that much about how, to, okay, yep, it is. It's the nth child thing. So let's just, um, let's take the nth child thing out. And we'll go back to my idea from before about uh, gradients. So let's see. Find our CSS gradient generator. And we'll just make a gradient. Um, let's see here. Uh, come over here. And let's see. Start about like that. I don't want any saturation, I don't think. And over here. be about like that so let's see copy the clipboard and let's see I'm gonna take this out actually hold on That for inventory and then see uh, combat log we'll take this out put it over there it was sensible dry coding but now I've decided I don't want to have it like that that way we won't have this issue with the uh, inventory highlighting not working right otherwise uh, this all went rather well we just need to gather some more inventory so to that end as i was saying before let's go to the level constants let's just like call this like 50 for now since we're trying to nail down loot um this will make it a lot easier to find loot to pick up and then we can like look at our I don't think that gradient worked. Did I not save the changes or what? I saved the changes. Am I in the right? No, I am not in the right one. Oh, okay, I see. So let me do something here. That is strange. I don't like that. Um, I know what happened here. Come over here and remove the saturation. Except I think I want it a little lighter on top and a little darker on bottom. But overall, I want it pretty dark. Okay, so I'll copy that, and let me take a look at my code, because I want to target, I targeted the whole div, and I want to target, so inventory li, with this bit, Let's see. Uh, inven inventory li. We'll cut this. Oh, 
Okay. And then, let's see. I'll put this back over here. And let's see how that looks. Little much on the well. Okay, so one one issue. Let's see here. I think I used padding on the inventory, so I want to change that to margin. That way. Oh boy. Um. Let's just take that out all together and then we'll put the padding in here. There we go. Great. Um, and let's see. Um, let's actually, let me see here. Let's do adding, and I think this starts on the left. So one rem, then let's do 0.2 rem, zero uh, PX and 0.2 rem. So we'll have 0.2 rem padding on the top and bottom. Uh, so let's do, what size is the, it's just one rem, so let's do like one, and then we need to change the line height. Yeah, that's not really working. Um, let's just go back to padding left one rim. For now. So at any rate, this gives us um, All right, did I, uh, yeah, okay. Now I've, I've messed up my uh, cascading, part of my cascading style sheet. So we need the active class to be after the other one so that it will properly function. Got me all messed up. Let's see. Okay, so now we seem to have a conflict between uh, the background and that. So let's see. Let's, I guess. Um, the solution would be to make a darker linear gradient so that it will properly override the thing. So let's start with this here. That, and then have a slightly darker one. Okay. Let's give that a try. It might even look snazzy, who knows? Come back to this and let's see here. 
Mm, why is it? Okay, I think I. Hmm. So clearly, I did not put a good bounding case on that, but um, zero one, and then so these are not. That's not overwriting. Let me try this. It was a nice thought, but currently I'm experiencing problems. So maybe I'll just leave it. I don't know. Maybe I was trying to be too fancy. I am just what? Unless I am mistaken. Um, let's see. Uh, right, so I didn't. Okay, first of all. Let me just uh, come back into the CSS file. I'm just going to undo everything I did up until the point where I took out the nth child one. It's all just a fantastic idea. All right, so let's try commenting that out so we can activate the commenting code to remove functionality memes. OK, this is a dastardly dungeon. Our way was blocked by a dragon straight away, which just means instant death. OK, great, so that all works. That is what we need to see. All right. Ah, uh, geez. Well, that's about as far as we're going to get today because we are out of time. So uh, that's programming. Uh, you never know how things are going to go. So you just give them a, give them a try. Um, I think we did do pretty well with some things. We're well on our way to inventory control. Uh, this is, again, this could have been broken down because this is honestly several things. So what did we what did we accomplish in terms of inventory control? We created this menu class that controls um, the current index. Before we do stop, let's just go ahead and fix this issue because um, right now, we are able to, um, so we need to go in here because if we if we go too high, then we'll we'll loop, or I guess we sh I should say if we go too far down. So let's see if um, menu index is less than or equal to menu index is less than, or, well, let's just say it less than or equal to zero because that'll cover all cases. Um, and we don't need to know anything about the world inventory, the player inventory length or any of that. Then we'll say else, we'll make an else condition and that's where we'll process the, the normal command. Um, uh, new menu set index world player inventory length minus one. Okay, so we save that. 
we should be able to yep good so satisfied with that uh <clears throat> we've now created the control for that i want to go back here to the loot table and um not loot table level constants and set this back to 10 spawn loot back to 10 so that it won't be too crazy all right so that'll uh, so much loot even in the walls there's loot in the walls so i will uh push a copy to the repository for the code that's the result of the things that we did tonight and um yeah so that'll be there and i'll also deploy uh this app as it stands so that you can see it um and play with it or whatever not that there's still not that much to do this is i guess it's pretty clearly going to take several more times so i'll just make more events i guess and if people want to see this thing continue to be developed then that's the way things will be well, maybe next time we'll take out some of these console logs uh so yeah great that's that is that um All right, um, so I shall uh, thank you. All right, uh, that will conclude this session. So I do hope to uh, continue along and we'll see how this all goes.